Well, this morning we are remembering one of New Orleans's most recognizable and beloved voices, Ronnie Virgins. Yeah, Ronnie died last night. He was 77 years old, and while his career was anything but conventional, he was praised as one of the best writers this city has ever produced. This morning, Tan Trong takes a look back on Ronnie's colorful career. You know, uh, when I first started doing this little show, uh, critics would come up and say, uh, why you call it rum a lot? I mean, what's with that? Why don't you call it griots or couscous or something? How do you put Ronnie Virgis into words? No matter which you'd choose, he'd find one better and say it in a style and voice that no one could ever match. We got something that's a little hard to define. We got something that's spicy, got a little aftertaste. A TV critic once called Ronnie's features a mix of eloquence, outrageousness, wit, and eccentricity. Simply put, he was an original, a poet who excelled at describing the city's people, culture, and ups and downs of everyday life in ways you'd never imagine. Do you consider yourself like kind of a New Orleans philosopher? No, not really. I, I really consider myself, if you put a name to it, a, uh, a tale teller, you know? Yeah. I tell tales. Those tales on television, in print, and radio were unlike anything New Orleans had ever seen before. Skull. He told tales of the city and its characters, which was easy to do well, because you know, he me, was but... one. I happen to know that I have an extremely finely shaped head. You don't get to see it much because it's hidden under all that thick hair. TV wasn't his first calling, nor was journalism. He'd like to remind people that his resume included jobs as a bartender, gas station pump jockey, pool hall manager, and PR man for his beloved fairgrounds. He grew up not far from the racetrack in the third ward. It's where he picked up the New Orleans accent that made him famous. I gotta tell you, just from the, uh, the, 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 the general area where I come from, obviously it's, a, it's kind of a distinct voice, a different uh, voice. Everybody in the neighborhood kind of sounded like this. Yeah. Now, if you went, there were certain parts now, if you went uptown or whatever, you, your accent would give you away. Yeah. Clearly, you, you, uh, he's not from around here. Ronnie was definitely from around here. A St. Aloysius grad who studied journalism at Loyola, his print career began at the Times-Picayune, where he wrote sports and a horse racing column, then a daily metro column. It was Channel 4's weekly show, Bill Elder's Journal, in the 1980s that first brought him to television. And a Crescent City star was born. Getting a little blush in those youthful cheeks. His words, delivered in that unmistakable voice, were matched by some of the best work of local photographers. Before long, Channel 26 hired Ronnie for its magazine show, Real New Orleans. He definitely was. And his offbeat, only in New Orleans personality, shines. So the doctor says, Mr. Nussbaum, did you wake up grouchy this morning? And Mr. Nussbaum says, no, I'll let her sleep. <laughs> TV brought his talents to more homes, but that didn't stop him from writing for print. In fact, his Razoo column ran in Gambit for 20 years. He wrote for dozens of other publications, winning top awards, including an Emmy. You know, I do a little writing myself once in a while. See? His columns also filled the pages of three books, but it would take 30 more to list the ways he made people smile, feel, laugh, or just stop and think. Ronnie was one of a kind. That voice is just unmistakable. He will be missed. Funeral arrangements have not been finalized for Ronnie Virgins. And so many great stories about Ronnie <laughs> that uh, uh, go over the years. And, and I always told Ronnie, I said, I, I just didn't like you because because he could write the way I thought I could, I hoped I could, mm -hmm. I wished I could, but never could. Yeah, you said he had a way with words. Oh, well, we're thinking of his family and friends today.